Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. The West End Church of Christ also has a website. On this website you can gain access to any lesson that's brought from the pulpit. You can do this by going to the menu on the website, selecting resources, and from resources you can select sermons and you can actually search for any specific lesson or you can browse through the lessons. Also on this website you can gain access to the More Bible Talk lesson that is broadcast live Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. and on Sunday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. You can listen live by clicking on the link from the More Bible Talk applet. Also, if you desire, you can also listen to More Bible Talk on the radio station WLLV, that's 1240 on the AM dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. If the character in Mark the hymn book to page 605, there will be the song of encouragement, page 605, after the lesson. Now let us turn to page 520, 520. In the same stanzas, one, two, and three, at the beginning of the third stanza, you may take your seat. It's convenient for you actually to stand at this time. Yes, this selection, Brother Melvin Spencer Jr. will bring the lesson for the morning. 520, stanzas one, two, and three. Take your seat at the beginning of the third stanza. I'm not ashamed to own that Jesus came and died on Calvary that by his blessed free atonement he prepared a way for me and this it so that I from bondage might forevermore be free. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed.
stated in Romans 1, 15 and 16, as so much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel in Rome. Amen. For it is the power, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Amen. So when we sing that song, mean it. Amen. Because if you are ashamed of the gospel, if you are ashamed of our dear Lord, there will not be an entrance for you into the kingdom. Amen. It is a wonderful, wonderful Lord's day. I was sitting there thinking about mentioning how great today is because the sun is shining. Man. But regardless whether the sun is shining or not, it is a good day. Man. Those that are visiting with us, you are, as we state from time to time, our honored guest. Man. For those names that were called on the individuals that were on the prayer list and are here, I was sitting and thinking that Sister Dolman is sitting back there. And if you did not see her before you came up, then you wouldn't have noticed her back there because she has on her mask. But Sister Dolman is with us this morning. Man. And it's good to have her to be out. Man. As you look at the title this morning, wouldn't it be nice if? <laughs> you know, people tell me sometimes that I'm mean. I'm not a very nice guy. <laughs> and the reason they say that is because they're not getting their way. And that's okay. I'd rather be mean. <laughs> than to give an individual something that they don't need. Once, sometime it happens, but the things that we need, God gives us those things. And we need to appreciate them. And we need to appreciate John 17, the Lord's Prayer. We need to greatly appreciate it. Because Jesus was not a selfish individual. When he came down here upon this earth, he came for a reason. To save his people from their sins. And as he talked to the Father in his prayer, his communication with him, he was not selfish in praying for others. And we find here in John 17, verse 18, again, this is one of the greatest Lord's prayers that is recorded. He says, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, Amen. that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Let me go back up to verse 17, where he says, sanctify them. 
in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now, again, we can, we can contemplate many of things. And we can appreciate many others. But there's no appreciation like hearing the truth. Amen. Now, there are some that want to reject it. There are some that would never spare it out of the mouth. There are some that will always rather hear the lie than the truth. Because the lie tells us that we can live any way we want to and God is all right with it. That, that's a lie. And as it has been said, and I believe Brother Mark would say it, that's a lie from the devil. And if it's a lie from the devil, remember he's the father of lies. Amen. He has told lies from the very beginning and he will tell lies to the very end. Amen. And there's a lot of people that are being led astray by his lies. Amen. We're going to look and we're going to talk about this subject. Wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus hadn't prayed this prayer? Wouldn't it have been nice if Jesus had not said that Father allowed them to be one as you and I are one? That way we can live and we can worship any way we want to. But since he did pray it, we need to abide by it. Amen. For he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the verses 10, Paul, as he writes to the church of Corinth, again, if Jesus hadn't prayed that prayer, Paul would not have said what he said right here. He wouldn't have written this to the Corinthians. He would have said, go ahead. I know what I heard from the house of Chloe. I know what I've heard. Go ahead and live the way you want to live. But here's what he says. I appeal to you brothers here in 1 Corinthians 1.10 by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. This is God's word. Amen. This is what we need to understand that we need to do, to do the same today. That be of the same mind and the same judgment. Amen. If God is against it, we need to be against it. If God hates it, we need to hate it. If God loves it, we must love it. We have to understand again that his word is true. His word is is true. And therefore, we need to continue to abide by it. Wouldn't it be nice if salvation was by faith only? Wouldn't it be nice? You don't have to do anything but say, I have faith and everything is all right. No. The problem with that is God's word does not say that salvation alone saves. His word doesn't teach that. And if his word doesn't teach it, we should not believe it. Amen. Proverbs 28 and the verse is 13. Proverbs 28 and the verse is 13. What does his word say? When individuals would come to you and tell you, all you have to do is have faith. Everything will be all right. You'll be saved. Don't have to worry about anything. Well, when you read here in Proverbs 28 and verse 13, he says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. So not just having faith that there is a God, but confessing your faults unto him. That's what Solomon is saying. Well, well, what happens to the world when the world says all you have to do is have faith? The world is lying to you. And they will continue to lie to you. And we have to continue to look in the word of God to prove them wrong. Luke chapter 13 and the verses 3. Luke 13 and the verses 3. Let's go back up and read verse 1 and, and come to verse 3. Luke 13, verse 1. There was some present at that very time who told him about the Galatians, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. 
And he answers them, do you think that these Galatians were worse sinners than all the other Galatians because they suffered in this way? He says, no, I tell you, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you all will perish. Amen. Likewise, you will perish. And so again, if faith alone saves, why does an individual have to confess? Well, why does an individual have to repent? Well, why, well how, how come he can't just continue to live the way he's living? How come he can't go around with a closed mouth and never confess that Jesus is the Christ or confess that he has sin in his life? So we need to understand that faith alone doesn't work. That's right. You need something to go along with it. And, and you find here three things that, that say, yes, faith saves, but confession saves as well. And, and repentance saves as well. And then we continue on and, and to think about this, this topic here. Wouldn't it be nice if this thing would work? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? So we have to understand wouldn't it be nice if we could all understand the Bible alike? Or, or wouldn't it be nice if we if we could not be, if the Bible could not be understood? If the Bible could not be understood, that means that if you are a homosexual, you can continue to live that way. If you're a whoremonger, you can continue to live that way. If you're a drunkard, you can continue to live that way. But that that's the problem. The problem is the Bible can be understood. Amen. And know that God is displeased with individuals that, to, that participate in things that he is displeased with. Amen. So we look and we find here in John chapter 8 and the verse is 32. John chapter 8 and the verse is 32. Yeah, all you have to do is pick it up. Read it for yourself. Get an understanding from what the word of God says. It says here in John 8, 31, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Amen. And you will know the truth, and, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Well, how can we, we know what God wants us to do? How can we know how to become a disciple of our Lord and our Savior if we don't pick up the word? Amen and get that understanding that needs to be got. We have to look deep into the treasures of our Lord's word and we don't have to, you know, scratch it too hard. Just, just look what it says right here. You can know the truth and the truth will set you free. Man. A lie is what binds us. A lie is what bounds us. A lie is what keeps us in the prison. But we can free our minds by doing the things that God wants us to do. You can know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In Acts chapter 17, in the verse is 11. See, so many times we want to listen to what man says. Oh, he preached a good word today. Well, what did he talk about? I can't remember, but it was a good word. Well, what Bible verses did he use? Oh, he just told a bunch of good stories, and, and it was just so inspirational. Those things are carrying a whole lot of people to hell. What we need is we need God's word. Man. We need to look and we need to do as these individuals did here in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. It says that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, that they searched the scriptures daily to make sure that those things were so. Man. And that's what we want you to do. Well, we don't want you to take man's word for it. Yes, I'm standing before you today. Yes, I'm preaching to you God's word. Yes, I'm telling you some things that's going to help you. But don't just take my word for it. Go and research it for yourselves. Amen. Search Amen. the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Amen. The Bible. Wouldn't it be nice if it could not be understood? But it can be. That is why they searched it. That is why Jesus said, you can know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. So we need to get into it. And we need to do the things that are right. So wouldn't it be nice if, that word if, well, what does it mean? It's a conditional statement. If sin wasn't really all that bad. If sin wasn't harmful at all, 
Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, we, we all agree. There are some things that, that you may have done in times past that you may say, well, it's not really that bad. I can go back to those things. No, you can't. That's right. Not to be pleasing to God, you can't. Right. You can go if you want to, but I would not advise it. Don't go home and say, the preacher said, I can go back to those things and everything will be all right because you would be lying. Sin is bad. Sin is harmful. In Galatians chapter 5, and the verse is 21. Galatians chapter 5, and the verse is 21. We, we find here, as Paul is writing to the church of Galatia, and, and he's explaining to them some things that, that they need to stay away from, because these things will not be pleasing to God, and it will cause them not to be able to enter into the kingdom. He says, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you as, listen to what he says here, I warn you, I warn you as I have done in times past, you know, I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So is sin bad? Is it really that harmful? Yes, it is. It's bad. It's harmful. It will cause you not to enter into the kingdom. Come judgment. That's right. God is going to judge us by his word. That's right. It is Amen. not going to be something he said, oh, well, this is old. Yeah, I remember that person. That person, they, they had done so well. They, they were in worship service every Sunday in every Bible class. They helped people out in the community. They did this. They said the right things all the, world, all the time. Let me find something they did not do. <laughs> no, that's not our God. You do what he tells you to do, and you will be able to enter into heaven. He's not going to try to search something new to find out a fault with you. He tells us what we can do, and he tells us what we can't do. Man. And such like. You figure out what the such like is. <laughs> and you'll know whether or not you're pleasing to God or not. We try to hide from God so many times and really understand this. You cannot hide from him. He's everywhere. He's seeing the good. He's seeing the bad. Amen. He understands who you are. And yes, for that individual that says, I'm struggling with this, God knows my heart. Yes, he knows your heart. He knows that, that you had already thought in your mind to get in your vehicle, to go down to the liquor store and buy you whatever you want to buy. Get back in your vehicle, partake of that, drive, and have an accident. God knows your heart. Do you know it? Do you know it? If not, you need to figure it out. First Corinthians chapter six in the verses nine. We alluded to this verse this morning. Actually, we went to verse 11, but we, we were here this morning in Bible class. Understand again that individuals that participate in sinful matters would not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's no one in here. No one in here. I'm gonna say it a little bit different this morning. There's no one in here that has not sinned. Amen. I'm not going to ask you that question that I generally ask you because I don't want anybody to, to be getting up at the wrong time and you be pointing out thinking that you're holy. You've never done anything wrong. But here Paul says, as he writes to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in the verse is 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. God is not a liar. He has not, you know, the Son hasn't gone to prepare a place where, where sinners are going to get into. It's a place of righteousness, a place Amen. that is holy, a place that is divine. But again, we all haven't always been who we are today. That's right. And then even saying that, some need to change That's right. and become the person that God wants them to be. That's right. He says, as such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. I believe that there are some people that think just because no one has really sat down with them to tell them that these individuals will not in inherit the kingdom of heaven, that they can continue to live that way. 
Someone actually told me that one time. Don't tell me, don't tell me. If you don't tell me, I'm not going to be required to give an answer for it. Yes, you are. Mm. Yes, you are. You are going to be required. You are going to give an answer. For every deed that you've done in this body, whether good or whether bad, Amen. every secret thing, he's going to bring that out. He's going to point that out to you. It's not going to be a time for debate. It's not going to be a time for a discussion. Oh, please, please, Lord, let me in. I made that one mistake. One mistake will cause you to lose your life. Think Amen. about Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I, I, can, I can probably say for sure that they committed other sins as well. But at this point, in Acts chapter 5, when they lied about the money, they died. Mm. What are you lying about? Come on. And don't lose your life behind that lie, Amen. but do the things that God wants you to do. Sin Amen. is sin. Therefore, to him, the Lord, to do right and do it not to him, it is sin. Amen. What God calls sin is sin in every man's life. Some things may be sin to you and may not be to me. You may not want to eat meat and you eat it, you're sin. I'm going to eat all the meat I can. <laughs> no sin. We have to understand again God's word. Amen. Sin, if it was not really that bad, how many of us would be participating in it? Mm. How many of us? I venture to say all. I venture to say all. Because the Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If Man. we had not the word of God, if we could not understand the word of God, we'll still be living in sin. No need to change. And there's a lot of people that won't change because there are some Christians that think that sin is not that bad and hanging out with their friends out there in the world, Amen. participating in the same things that they're participating in. So therefore, those individuals say, why should I become a Christian? You're doing the same thing I'm doing. Well the very same thing. They need to look at someone else's life <laughs> and not yours. Romans 6.23 I believe we've already hit it. Romans 6.23. Let's hit it again. Let's understand it is from the word of God. I'm not standing up here making this up. I'm telling you what the word of God says and if it's what the word of God says we need to what? Believe it. But the wages of sin is death but the gift but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Free gift. Now I'm going to say, if you don't like free, get up and leave. Right. <laughs> don't see nobody right in front of the door. We all like free. Amen. All like free. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, we talk about that gift of the Holy Spirit in, in Acts chapter 2. It's salvation. It's a free gift. It's from God. And we need to accept it. He's not giving everybody the gift to speak in tongues. He's not giving us that. Brother Mark and I were talking about the work of the Holy Spirit on the radio program. See, he can dwell within you, but not in any miraculous way. He's not going to force himself on you. Just as God is not going to force this free gift on you. Eternal life. You know, how many of us want to live forever and not die here upon this earth? Mm. We want to live forever around the throne, worshiping our God. Amen. Because God desires men everywhere to be saved. Amen. So therefore, we need to look at the word and we need to be obedient unto what he wants us to do. Wouldn't it be nice if... There was no hell. Wouldn't that be nice? You, you, you know, the only place that, that has been prepared would be heaven. How, how are you going to know this if you don't go to the Word? Yeah, that's what Jesus says in, in John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. You know, I, it's hard to talk about hell and not be able to talk about heaven. Because both of them are prepared places. Both of them. How do I know this? I know this because the Bible teaches this. Hell was prepared for Satan and his angels. Not for you and I. For Satan and his angels. But wouldn't it be nice if there was not a hell? We, we again, we can live anywhere we wanted to live and not have to worry about that eternal punishment, that second death. Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 through 46. Matthew 25, verses 41 through 46. And then he will say to those on his left, 
Depart from me, you cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you did not give me food. And I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Oh man, I tell you. If there was no hell, we wouldn't have to do none of those things, would we? Mm. But you know, a lot of people are ignoring those things. They say, I don't want to do that. But, but listen to what he says. Then they also would answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he would answer them, saying, truly I say to you, you did not do it to one of the least of these. You did not do it to me. Amen. And these will all go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Eternal. That, that's the key word there. Eternal. You will never be able to escape. It's not a few seconds in hell. It's a eternity. 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 Do not fall prey and think that there is no hell and that you can live any way that you want to live. People will teach, oh, there's a place called Purgatory. Uh, I, I want you to go and look at the movie Purgatory. It's a Western, so some of y'all wouldn't go and watch it. But it's, it's a temporary place. It's a temporary place. That, that's what the Purgatory, they, they said you can pray them out of hell. You can't pray them out of hell. Mm. There's no escape. If that's where you're doomed to go because of your behavior, then that's where you're doomed to go. You have time to change. You must change in order to be pleasing unto God. Amen. In Revelation chapter 21 and the verses 8. Revelation chapter 21 and the verses 8. You know, I, I can hear it now. People say, oh man, let's not go to the book of Revelation. I'm afraid of the book of Revelation. Live right and you don't have anything to fear. Amen. He says this in Revelation 21, 8, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, as for the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and suffer, which yields the second death. You believe in God's word. You believe that there's a hell. Amen. You don't have to go there. It wasn't prepared for you and I. It was prepared for Satan and his angels. There are so many people that have turned their backs on God that hell is where they're going to spend their eternity. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a second chance after death? Wouldn't it be nice, a second chance? Well, you know, I can, I come here in, 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 in torment, and, and I'm, I'm trying my very best to, to, to get my life right. Here, here I am with these other souls that's never condemned, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm nice now. I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Hmm. What about the rich man? Yeah. Rich man. The rich man was there in torment. He wasn't asking for a second chance, was he? He wasn't. He knew that he was already condemned. He wasn't asking for a second chance. He was just asking for a drop of water to cool his tongue. Man. That's all he was asking for, but that's not all he asked for. See, he wasn't selfish either. He wanted that water to cool his tongue, but he also wanted someone to go back and talk to his brothers well. that were just as sinful as he was. And he knew if that had not changed, that they were going to come to that same place in which he was, a place of torment. Knowing that there's no escape, and that's exactly what we find here as we read there. No escape. In verse 25 it says, But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your own lifetime received good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. Not a one. It's no, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to spend a little time in torment and I'm going to go here and spend a little time in paradise. No, no such thing. 
So we got those people that uh, go to Florida for the winter, and then they come back, you know, go back down south, or come back up north uh, in the summer. <laughs> they they want to always be comfortable. <laughs> you living in sin, you have no right to be comfortable. Man, man. No right whatsoever. You, you break your plate, you 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 deserve to eat off the ground. Mm. If you bite the hand that feeds you, you deserve to go hungry. We need to understand that this is a free gift that God is offering to us. And if you slap away his hand, if you refuse the word, you deserve to go to a burning hell. Mm. And so we need to understand that the rich man, well, he has some glorious things in life. And he remembers all of those things. God is not going to let him forget. But he also is not going to let him forget how he treated other people. Man. And so we have to look at our lives and do the things that are right. And he says in verse 27, and he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Oh, we have, we have prayed for people. We have gone to visit people. We have tried to reach people. But they are still holding on to the things that are wrong. And Abraham just laid it out for him. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone comes. And he said, but Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear them. And he says, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced that someone should rise from the dead. I want y'all to think about that just for a moment. They will not even hear. So in, in other words, what was being said right here, that these individuals just possibly lived after the resurrection of Jesus. And it's so pro prophetic, pro 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 what's that word? Prophetic? That's it. That Abraham is telling them, telling him that they will not obey. They're going to be in the same place. Same place as, as, as the rich man. The five brothers was going to be there. They have a family reunion. And talk about all the people they mistreated. Talk about all the missed opportunities they had to turn their lives around, to feed a man like Lazarus. But they didn't do it. They didn't do it. What are we going to do? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a second chance after that? Man. Hebrews 9, 27, it tells us something totally different, don't it? Not a second chance. For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Man. Are you ready to die? Or are you ready to be judged? Or are you ready to go into a place of paradise or a place of torment? Or are you ready? You know, if you're not ready, you need to get ready. One or the other. Why? Because you're going to die one day. Amen. One day you're going to die. Amen. Wouldn't it be nice if salvation was by faith only? Wouldn't it be nice if the Bible could not be understood? Wouldn't it be nice if sin wasn't really that bad, not harmful? Wouldn't it be nice if there was no hell? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a second chance after death? Wouldn't it be nice? Yes, it would be. And you know, all of these things right here, somebody out there is preaching that you can be saved by faith only. Somebody is out there preaching that you cannot understand the Bible if you don't have some type of degree. I took my temperature this morning. It was 93.1. Mm. We can check that tomorrow down. I think that thing was all messed up. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? But somebody's out there preaching this, that sin wasn't really that bad. No harmful. Keep on doing what you're doing. Once saved, always saved. Oh, God is not going to condemn you to hell. Keep on living the way you're living. You're just going to go for a little while. <laughs> Who would want to go to hell for a little while? Well, not me. Someone is preaching this. There's going to be a second chance after death. It's going to be all right. Somebody is praying for you. Somebody is paying for you to come out of hell. It's not going to work. Now, 
Wouldn't it be nice if everybody would look at this plan of salvation and be obedient to it? Yes, it would be. It would be. It would be so nice that someone would say, I'm ready to become a child of God. I'm ready to do the things that are right and pleasing before God. We find here in Acts chapter 3 and verse 22, Moses said, the Lord God will raise you up like a prophet like me from the brothers. You shall listen to him and whatever he tells you. Hearing is important. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we find in John chapter 8 in the verse 24, Jesus said, except ye believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. I already read Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Just drop down to verse 5 if you don't want me to continue to repeat myself. It says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Amen. So we need to understand what God wants us to do. Hearing, believing, repenting, and confessing in John chapter 12, and the verse is 42. John chapter 12, and the verse is 42. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogues. You see how important confession is? These individuals would not confess it because they did not want to be put out of the synagogue. We must confess that Amen. Jesus is the Son of God, and then once we make that confession, we get baptized. Why? Because it's for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Acts chapter 2, the verse is 38. It is for us to have our sins washed away, according to Acts chapter 22, when Paul reaccounts his conversion. Understand again that we must do what God wants us to do and then be faithful until the very end. So if you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, wouldn't it be nice if you did so today? It's simple. It's not so hard. Uh, that's called God's simple plan for salvation. Man has complicated it. <laughs> They've added things to it. There are about... You know, we talk about 24, 25, 26 things that save, and the question is, which one can you leave out? They're all so simple. All we have to do is be obedient to what he says, and we can be saved, and then that's when the rubber meets the road. That's when, yes, we're going to figure out, Satan has been tempting me to do this, tempting me to do that, but don't give in to it. Keep living the way God wants you to live. Come and make that confession that you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and be immersed in the water and of baptism. Rise into walk of newness of life. If you're here and you are already a Christian, and you're straight away, we're asking you to come back to the fold before it is everlasting too late. Confess your faults unto him, and he's just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. As we stand and sing the invitation hymn, we ask you to please come. 605. <laughs>
Praise Him.